Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So by now you have this done. We should just quickly go through it. The original function, y equals 2x minus 1. Take a look at the values. Now, no, note I don't normally ask for them. It's just with absolute value functions, it's much simpler to show. So 7, 5, 3, 1, 1, 3, 5. So when graphed, go something like 1, 3. The original function, 2x minus 1. Up. Y equals 2x minus 1 should look like that. The absolute value should look like that. Y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 1. If you haven't got that, please double check your calculator. Make certain you're going math. hit math button, the numbers scroll down to number one, absolute. Now this gives you the critical point of x equals one half. Now, here, domain, x is all real, range, y is all real also. And what do we have over here? The same restrictions. Domain is x is all real and the range y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, here are a couple of things to point out. If we look at, sorry, this should have already written down. I shouldn't be spending time on it. If you haven't, then pause the tape, check it gets your graph and your data table down. Right. Now, a few things to note here. Y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Now, if you wanted to, <coughs> sorry, if you wanted to, that's 2 times x minus 1 half, or 2, You know, we don't need double set of brackets. X minus one half. So you got a slope of two. And look at your critical value. X minus one half equals zero. Set x equal to set it equal to zero and solve. Now, so you can algebraically find your critical value. Now, more importantly, and I want to stress this. While you can find the, al the critical value algebraically, more important, I want you to be able to write this, the two versions of this absolute value equation. This value, this part of the equation is y is equal to 2x minus 1, exact same. What's this part? Remember we talked about that in the first part? This is y equals minus bracket 2x minus 1 or minus 2x plus 1. Now, that's getting a little bit messy, but look at that. That's really important. This is called piecewise notation. When here, x, we look to the left of our critical point, x equals 1 half, so when we're to the left of that, x is less than 1 half, y is this version, minus 2x plus 1. And when we're to the right of it, it's the same function, 2x minus 1. Okay? 
2 x minus 1 minus 2 x plus 1 at our critical value. Now, that's a lot. I'm going to stop for a moment. See where those equations come from. This is called piecewise notation. Now, technically, I'm supposed to go y equals like that instead of the two y's, but whatever. This is really important. I need you to be able to take any equation and go, oh, I can write this in piecewise notation. Or, looking at the critical values, there will be two separate equations I can use. Now, this is, was important in the good old days before graphing calculators. Now, it's just kind of, why do we do this? And actually, in calculus, I'll show you. Now, that's a straight line. OK? So this is a lot to assemble, or a lot to take in the piecewise notation. If you're having trouble with it, replay the recording, look back at the uh, video again. Otherwise, when you're ready, let's go on. And I want you guys to graph y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 1, and y equals the absolute value of 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 on the same graph. Now graph it, give me a table of values and domain and range. So, and I should say that out loud again. Domain and range. So give me that for both graphs. Pause the recording. Domain, range, and the data tables. Okay, when you got this done, come on back and we'll talk about it.